Hi guys, this is the Future Gravy Podcast, and my name is Rod Rojas, and I am an ad man, so I write advertisements, and my podcast is going to be talking about many different things, but uh, today we're going to be talking about my area of expertise, which is advertising. So, um, are you sick and tired of wasting money? in advertising that doesn't deliver um, and the answer to that question is most likely yes as a matter of fact those who are not sick and tired of wasting money in advertising is because they wasted some money in advertising and then they decided to give up and then they're running their business without advertising so that's the most common thing that happens and you can attribute this problem to a series of things and i'm going to just give you some guidelines that might be able to help you or help your managers in your in your business so the most important thing is to have trackable advertising so if you see um, a company like coca-cola you know they will put an ad that just says coca-cola and there is no call to action. There is no specific phone number to call. There is no coupon. Nothing that they can track. However, this is a one of the biggest corporations in the world. And they alone, these big companies, they can afford to do these um, multi-decade branding campaigns that spend billions of dollars and raise awareness about a brand but for the medium e and obviously small company small and medium company even large companies even most large companies um, this is a waste of money branding is a waste of money and what you want is advertisement that is highly trackable so that you know all the variables that work or don't work. So let's say that you, you're selling a fizzy drink just like Coca-Cola, but you're a neighborhood person, right? So if you're a neighborhood person and you're putting signs in your neighborhood, you wouldn't just put a sign that says, you know, David's Cola. Um, and then hope for the best. That would be a waste of money. You would start by making something, um, making an offer, making an offer that will allow you to track that ad. So let's say maybe you can say you can do a free tasting for your drink, right? And for each ad that you make you generate maybe a different phone number or maybe a different email address or maybe a different coupon um, a, a different promo code so that you know each location in the neighborhood which ones yielded more responses right and then you would have the customers come in for a tasting and you know, it's a fizzy drink. It's not going to be a $1,000 uh, event. It's going to be cheap, right? So you have lots of opportunities like that to have um, cheap uh, lead generation um, events or, or promotions that allow you to track both the quality of the ad and also the delivery of the ad how the ad is delivered right so uh, and uh, people say oh so then how do you do branding branding for the small medium and even the smaller large corporations branding should be done with just a quality delivery just deliver the best product ever and then people will remember you people remember your will remember your product 
people will will you will develop a following basically if your product is outstanding a big problem that i see out there is people running businesses with products that are just kind of average you know they they open up a neighborhood coffee shop you know and then they just you know make sure that it's decorated cute they make sure that the coffee is okay and then their business obviously is okay right um, um, but you would be better served not doing any branding campaigns none don't spend any money on awareness and spend all your money in product excellence right so all that money that you are going to spend in branding advertising spend it on higher quality coffee beans all that money that you were going to spend on branding advertising it spend it on training your baristas with an outside um, barista specialist to deliver the best coffee right so that type of behavior is going to yield far better results than a branding campaign because the branding campaign can it can only do so much right even even if you pour in all the millions and millions of dollars needed for a branding campaign if your product sucks your branding campaign is not going to take hold because people are going to be curious about your product they're going to go taste it and then it's going to be average right so you you should always start any any business venture or any advertising venture should be customer centered and you should always have the the highest respect for your customer and the highest compassion for your customer and never um, those business owners that dismiss customers and hate their customers and that are, are impatient with their customers you just need to find something else to do because you will not succeed in the long run you will not make money in the long run you might have an okay business right now if demand is high enough if demand is high enough and your price is low enough you will get some people yeah like uh in toronto where i'm from um i don't live there but where i'm from th the cost of living is so high that some food joints can afford to have horrible service because they sell good tasting um ethnic food at a decent price right and people are broke and they'll put up you know with with the poor service they'll put up with the dirty bathroom they'll put up with the rude uh waitress because the food is half price from you know the the other establishment so under such circumstances you will get away with bad service and um, uh, even a mediocre product but make no mistake you are leaving money on the table you need to s create that switch in your brain switch that mindset and all it takes is to meditate upon positive images of your customer all the good things that the customers do for you first of all you have to think of your customer with a lot of compassion your customer is your mom your friends that's the profile of your customers these people that you love they are they are the public right your wife your kids so when you're hating on your customers you're hating on on everybody basically yeah um, and you need to change that mindset and there are lots of materials out there for positive thinking uh, meditation affirmations whatever but if you change your mindset and you put yourself with compassion in the place of the customer 
you will have a successful business. You will be busy. If you deliver what the customer needs, you will be busy. And I was for a while uh, selling musical instruments and I, I was heavily involved in the classical music scene for a while. More as a hobby because that doesn't make any money. Um, so I would um, play some gigs and often there was this sort of contempt towards the audience, right? Uh, that um, the audience was not as educated as they should be, that they only wanted pops concerts with like movie music. They didn't want to listen to the real symphonies, to the real music, you know. And, um, and obviously then the orchestras are folding. Yeah, there is nobody in the halls. There is nobody in those concerts because they have lost that customer love, that customer compassion that brings in customers, that brings in money. If you serve your customers, you will succeed. So when you're advertising, you have to um, think of it that way. Try to serve your customer as much as possible. And that's going to be your best branding campaign. Nothing even, nothing else even comes close, right? There was even a company, a coffee company in the U.S. called Javalia. They were, do I, I don't know if they're still around. I think they are. They were only mail order, and they decided to spend zero money on advertising. They decided to just do mail order and just sell awesome products. And they developed this great following of people that really appreciated what they were doing, that really appreciated their product, and they didn't know advertising. So as an advertising man, right, I'm telling you, you, you should believe in this because uh, as an advertising man, I'm telling you that my services are worth nothing if you're not taking care of your customers, right? Um, if, if I were to tell you that I can make your business flourish just by the use of my words and by my writing and that I'm just the most amazing writer, nonsense. It's nonsense. You need to be customer-centered first, and then maybe I can help you. Maybe. Yeah? The other thing that you need is, and this is also customer-centered, is you don't fall in love with your product. Don't fall in love with your product because you never know what your customer will want. Yeah? Like this example of the symphony orchestras, right? The customers don't want these heavy symphonies, at least not in Canada right they want movie music they want to go to the hockey game and who are we to judge them who are we to tell them you know you're not supposed to watch that that you know you're not supposed to read uh, Stephen King you're supposed to read Shakespeare instead what arrogance no 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 if you are if you if you have a restaurant right and your customer doesn't want you know fancy you know, snail soup, you know, with with truffles. If they just want a good burger with well-made fries, then that's what you deliver. And so knowing your market is going to come along, is going to be exactly what you need to do in order to serve your customer, right? So in that vein, if you're customer centered, if you love your customer and want to serve them, then it is your duty. It is your duty as an advertiser, as a, as a business owner, to use your advertising to sell as many products as possible because you're solving problems. You're delivering a quality product, right? So when my customers, sometimes they say, oh, I don't want to sound like a snake oil salesman or I, I don't want to sound salesy. 
I want to sound, sound sophisticated. I don't want to use the word sale or I don't want to use the word free. It cheapens my product. And I say, nonsense. If you love your product, if your product is amazing, and if you know that you're serving your customers, if you love your customers and you're devoted to them, then it is your duty to sell to them as many products as possible, right? And that's where I come in at that stage when you have figured out your product and your market, right? That's where I can come in and I can help you uh, sell your products. But that's not the point of this video, right? The point of this video is basically you have to you have to look at the priorities and the priorities are compassion towards your customer and service to humanity um the the company that serves the most people is the company that's going to make the most money yeah so th that's why walmart makes far more money than a deli chain in the east coast selling expensive wines yeah because walmart is selling to middle america to the average person to the single mom to everybody and they sell also to people in the upper classes by the way yeah like i, I have a very good income and I used to go to Walmart, right? I have nothing against Walmart. They, they're, they're great. Not only that, but if you look at the workforce in at Walmart, whenever you go to Walmart, it's like, it's like the, the, the whole universe. Women in hijabs, older, older people working as greeters, you know, with their walkers. I mean, this is, I don't know why people hate on Walmart so much. It's an amazing place. All these uh, smear campaigns, I guess, against Walmart, they're serving customers and they are, they are also um, hiring people that would not get hired in mom and pop stores. A little mom and pop store, you know, the supposedly the the stores that supposedly closed because of Walmart. I have a hard time believing that, that theory. Um, they can't afford to hire a senior with a walker. That's just not going to happen, right? It's expensive to hire a senior with a walker. Walmart does that. Walmart hires people that are extremely overweight to, I don't know if you've seen it, you can't do that everywhere, yeah? Um, so um, I got off I got off track there a little bit. Uh, so you have to be salesy. You have to speak directly to your customer in their language. And you don't want to be cute. You don't want to be cute. You don't want to be funny. I know that people watch those Super Bowl commercials. And you have to understand that those corporations have a different set of priorities. They can, this is part of their branding campaigns. They can afford to just dump a few million dollars in a commercial for the Super Bowl. A commercial that's not going to bring them any increase in sales necessarily but it might make the shareholders happy it might make the board members happy it might um it might improve their branding campaigns i i somehow doubt it right um and it's very different for them it's not a lot of money to run a commercial or two like that for a, one of those huge corporations. This is not a relevant amount of money, right? But for the average person, the average person, the average company, the average manager, you don't want to be entertaining when you're when you're selling. You because you want to be 
in problem solving mode for your customer. You want to be working for your customer in that moment. Think of it as, for example, when you're going for any service, you're going, for example, to a doctor's office. Do you want the doctor to greet you with a dance and a song and a pirouette and some, you know, uh, pom-poms and being cute? Or do you want the doctor to just listen to you and try to deliver to you the service that you need and try to solve your problems? Think of it anywhere. You go to a restaurant. Sure, if it's your birthday, it's okay. They can come and sing your birthday. That's fine, right? But if you go to, uh, to a restaurant, you have a date. You're talking to your date. You just want your food to be delivered in a professional fashion. You want the waiter or waitress to be knowledgeable, to be able to advise you, to bring your food, you know, on time and and to watch the cleanliness of your environment and things like that you want professionalism you don't want the waitress to come with a song and and a dance talking to you about the menu no this is this is nonsensical right uh, and just put yourself in any situation any situation that you are you know you're buying cigarettes you're going to the dentist you're bu you're getting your car fixed think of any situation where you need a service when would you want somebody to come with with a joke to start you know trying to be funny i i somehow i can't conceive any situation where i would want that sure if i if i'm at the doctor's office and the doctor is serving me and the doctor is in a good mood and he is slightly humorous or 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 says something that is pleasant yeah that that's it's fine right but that's not what what's going to sell me right um so i think i think that you need to when, when you when you put yourself in any sort of business or advertising situation um, especially if your advertising is not working, right? If it's working, then just tune me out, <laughs> right? Because there are sometimes markets that are slightly different, yeah? Um, and you, we have to be humble enough to, you know, to just admit when something that we think shouldn't work and it works, okay, fine, you're supposed to just... But... If your advertising is not working or if your company is not growing the way you want it to grow then it is likely that your your sort of customer focus from the ground up is broken somewhere yeah um, and that's what you need to assess nothing else matters just customer focus once you have that customer focus then you can advertise in any way you want you can even use negative advertising because if you're if you're focused on the customer then it won't be snake oil sales because you have a solution for that problem it's not manipulative yeah so if somebody has killer back pain you're a chiropractor and you really know what you're doing. Now, there are good chiropractors and bad chiropractors. If you're a bad chiropractor, you know who you are. Yeah. But and if you're a good one, you know also who you are. Right? If you do really have a solution for their back, right? And you put in your advertising, can't get out of bed today? Is your back killing you? You're using negative advertising, but for the person who really can't get out of bed, this speaks to them. And if you have a solution for them, or if you think you can help them, then it is completely okay. Actually, I would say it is your duty. If you have a, if you have a solution for somebody's back pain, 
This is like a major thing. It is your duty to use negative advertising to help them get out of pain, right? If you're selling tires, car tires, and you have tires that could prevent accidents because they're the best winter tires or whatever reason, it is your duty to scare your customers from not getting the winter tires, right? So um, just let me know if you have any questions. I think um, you can um, also change your mindset. So look into that. Look into customer-centered business and look into um, a positive mindset, positive looking at your co uh, customer with positive eyes as if the customer were your relative, your friend, because that's what they are, okay? So um, my name is Rod Rojas, um, and if you have any questions, you can contact me. My website is moresalesoryourmoneyback.com. Take care.